Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. And just as a reminder, our channel focuses on three really important things. How we can become more self-reliant, how to ensure that we have food security for the coming days ahead, and emergency preparedness. Almost all of our videos focus in on one or more of those three goals. We want to help all of us be prepared for whatever might lie in our future, especially in terms of our food supply and being able to prepare foods off-grid. That is one thing that we really do stress. A number of months ago, we did a video on showing our off-grid kitchen, where we had all of the things set up outside in our outdoor kitchen that we use for off-grid. Now, we don't keep all of those things set up all the time because we like to keep them safe, and so we keep some of them in the house. A few months ago, we added a new piece of equipment, and we haven't done a big deal about it because we needed to learn it first, and we're still on that learning curve. But it is what is known as a flat top grill. In actuality, it is a griddle. And there are lots of good brands out there. We happen to pick Blackstone, and we have um, two of them. We have a full size 48 inch that we leave here at home all the time and we break it out only when family is here. We don't need that much room. But the one we are using most of all is the 22 inch tabletop because we can use it here at the house it is portable enough that we can just put it in the back of our truck and take it with us when we go camping um, in our trailer or uh, tent camping or wherever. And so we've learned a few things. Um, there are literally dozens and dozens and maybe hundreds of videos out there on how to do cooking on what has come to be known as a flat top grill. A flat top grill is a griddle that uh, and there are lots of advantages i had no idea how convenient it would be and there are lots of advantages and i wanted to talk to you about some of the benefits and then we're going to go cook breakfast out there just as a simple example in the future we will be doing more about cooking on a flat top but the number one thing for me is that, that it gives us an off-grid option. Now, ours is powered by propane, so as long as we have propane, we don't need electricity, we don't need the grid. Uh, it is dependent on propane, and that is um, downside, but the upside is that it does not depend on electricity in case the grid goes down. And our grid does go down here quite frequently, actually. In addition to the off-grid option, it is a versatile powerhouse. It can cook almost anything you want, anything that you can cook on a grill. Sometimes the taste is a little bit different than if you were cooking it on a charcoal grill, but you can cook all kinds of food. It has a wide, flat surface, and we'll see that when we go out there. And it gives even, fairly even, high heat all over that surface. You can cook so much more at one time. So in that way, it is an energy saver. You can, uh, by adjusting the um, height of the flame um, underneath the griddle, you can have different cooking zones where on this one surface, you can be cooking some things over here on a lower heat and some things over here on a higher heat. And then um, one of the big claims that flat top proponents, and there are thousands of them, um, talk about is that it is healthier grilling. Whether or not that's true, I'm not going to argue the benefits of a griddle over a grill. They both have implications for off-grid cooking, and whichever one is your preference, that's just fine. Right now we are exploring flat top grilling on this griddle. Here is what we have planned to show you today, just a simple breakfast meal. You can get as fancy as you want on a flat top grill with breakfast. I mean, you can cook bacon and pancakes and hash browns and eggs and all kinds of things. Jim and I are both trying to watch our waistlines a little bit. Uh, retirement hasn't been kind to when I step on the scale. So I'm trying to be better about that, really working on that. And we fix, try to fix fairly healthy breakfasts, although we love bacon. I mean, Jim could inhale it if he had the right 
<laughs> bodily functions to do that. I'm going to take that piece out. That's <laughs> Jim could eat it all day long. <clears throat> I gain about 15 pounds a day. <laughs> So when I open a new pound of bacon, I usually cook the entire thing so that we only cook once and we only use um, about four pieces, uh, one for me and three for him when we do meals. But because I've got the whole pound cooked and in the refrigerator, it's just easy to quickly warm up. So we'll be cooking a pound of bacon today. The other thing that we're going to do is French toast and look at the bread that we're going to use. This is our cinnamon raisin bread uh, that we made. I made it a couple of days ago in the bread machine. I'm really liking that bread machine. It has um, functions that I quite enjoy, some that I won't use, but it does have some that I enjoy. And this is one of the breads that I really like to make in the bread machine. And won't this make wonderful French toast? I'm gonna just quickly mix up the custard. And this is just kind of a dump recipe. I'm going to pour in some whole milk. And I don't like to make a huge amount of custard so that I have a whole lot left over. I try to judge it um, so that we don't have a whole lot that needs to be tossed out. And then I have some, my daughter has chickens. And so we have some wonderful eggs this morning to use. And I don't use a whole lot of eggs. I'm just gonna put three in here. And I'm going to put just a splash of maple syrup. We'll be using more, of course, over the French toast. And then I'm just gonna beat this up. Now, if you happen to have any leftover cream in your refrigerator, this would be a nice addition as well. You could add some vanilla. I happen to be totally out of vanilla, which thing I did not know until I started putting this together this morning. But you could certainly add vanilla to this custard. And then I'm going to put it in this broad, flat pan instead of a bowl. Because it is easier to put the bread in something where the bread doesn't have to be turned up on the edges. And I just want to show you a couple of the tools that we'll be using. Um, we have... Um, two different styles of, of spatulas. We have this one, which is a black stone. It has beveled edges. Those beveled edges come in really handy. And then we have this one that has rounded edges. The rounded edged ones uh, prevent you from gouging into your griddle. And so we have both types. We have more than these, but this is just two types. And then I have our uh, bacon press. This is also a black stone. I don't like I, I love cooking bacon on the griddle, um, on the flat top grill. I need to start remembering to call it what everybody else is calling it. Because when I try to cook it in the house, unless I cook it on my electric griddle, um, that's, it curls up and then those ends are still fatty and they don't get caramelized the way we like our bacon. And so that's why I love using this bacon press. So let's head outside and get started on our breakfast. So we have preheated this grill, uh, even though we may or may not be using both sides of the grill today, we will be using both sides. But we always preheat the whole thing so that it does not warp. We want to keep the griddle warm and we preheat on low and then we adjust the temperature from there. I'm going to put the bacon on. We're going to cook the bacon first and then we're going to elevate it on a rack keeping it warm while we do the French toast. So that's sort of the order that we're going to be doing things. What I do with this bacon press is just take turns with it across the griddle so that as things start, as the pieces start curling up, I'll put that weight on it for a little while, let it flatten out, and then I'll go someplace else on the grill and do the same thing. I'm sort of cleaning the griddle as I go so that it won't be with this beveled edge on this uh, spatula, it makes it really nice. Heading things in for the grease catch in the back. Now I'm just going to place this rack over here and turn this one completely off. And we're going to elevate the bacon 
keeping it warm, but not cooking it any longer. And I'm going to clean this side. Just a tad more oil, just to be sure we have plenty. And let's lay out the French toast. So I want this to soak really well. This bread is not soft and fluffy. It's a little bit, um, it's not stale, but it's a little bit hard. And we want to soften it with this custard. And then we'll put it straight on the griddle. This is a giant piece of bread. When Jim cuts bread, he cuts it at an angle instead of straight down. And so this bread is much thicker at the top than at the bottom, but it will be delightful as a piece of French toast. Oh, I can smell the cinnamon and the raisins. It's going to be just delicious. All right, this is nearly done, and so we'll take it in the house and plate it for our breakfast, and then I'll let this cool down a little bit, and I'll come back and show you how I clean, clean off the grill every single time we use it so it doesn't rust and it doesn't um, buckle. Here we have our breakfast, and it is just, smells so good. So two pieces of bacon. Oh, it's Jim, so I'll give him three. <laughs> I'm going to take one. And then here's Jim's big fat one right here. Do you want your other one on the top or do you want sure. it just, okay, right on the top. That way I can really be big and fat. <laughs> and then here is mine. Now, we're going to take a quick break and have our breakfast, but I am going to just take a quick bite of this on camera so that you can see a little bit of butter. And... Just a little bit of syrup. Oh my goodness. It is fantastic. Nice crust on the outside, soft on the inside. I can taste that cinnamon and the raisins. It is a glorious breakfast. So excuse us while we go eat, and then we'll go clean off the griddle. Well, we had a delicious breakfast, and so we're here to clean the grill. Um, I'm wearing an apron now. I should have put one on when I was cooking. Last time I wore this apron, we got a funny comment. I don't think it was intended to be funny. But this person said, what is that brown glittery stuff? It looks like intestines. Well, it is my hair. You see my hair and then my lips right there. This apron was made for me by my niece, my sister Cindy's daughter. And uh, we've done a video on her coming and presenting me with the apron. So bless her sweetheart. She has a little store on Etsy. It is, um, what's the name of it? Ruby Castle on Etsy. And she has these aprons available. So the tools that we need to clean this grill are, um, I've got my oil right here. I have water in a squeeze bottle if necessary sometimes, especially if you do sweet stuff. A uh, little bit of water works great. And then I have uh, some paper towels. So the first thing that we're going to do, and Jim, maybe you want to come over. Come we did a lot of pre-cleaning. And so about the best tool, for, in my opinion, is a bench scraper for doing the cleaning on a griddle. It gets into the very corners, and um, then I just wipe stuff off on a paper towel as I go. The pre-cleaning really helps, but it's not the cleaning. This happens to be a little bit of the bacon grease that I am pulling across. Mm -hmm. 
We're sending most of that down the little chute there. And go over the top. We want to leave a nice oiled top. And if it's bacon grease, it's just fine. We don't want any of the original steel exposed to the elements and so it needs to have a light coat of oil. That is it, we're done. Now, we don't leave it set up like this. We have a cover for it. Um, in fact, I've just, we have just ordered a hard top cover for this. Uh, we have a soft cover for it, which does pretty well, but when it rains, it's not completely waterproof and water gets there and then comes down and touches this. So we need a hard cover for out here. Uh, Jim disconnects this and certainly turns it off at the tank down below here. And so we want to practice as much safety as we possibly can. Now, just a word about this griddle. Um, most of the people who present griddling, um, or as they call it, flat top grilling, um, do a lot of do a lot of recipes like with steaks and expensive cuts of meat and um, a little bit fancier, which is just fantastic. We want to be able to learn that stuff too. While our society is where it is right now, we can afford a steak once in a great while. And we even have been studying how to do reverse searing with a little bit of um, area smoking, a small area smoking on this, and we'll show that to you as well. All the ideas we're getting from other people, so we're not inventing any of these ideas ourselves, but what our particular um, focus will be that so far no one else that I have seen has had is how can you use this tool to help support off-grid cooking in, in times that might be quite difficult. What are the foods that we can pull from food storage that will really help us um, fix the uh, nutritious meals for our family in very creative ways? And I'm pretty impressed with this griddle. I think it is one of the most important cooking tools that we have. So as we go forward, we'll be presenting more videos and um, we're having a meeting with my sister, Cindy, and her husband, John, and the four of us are going to talk about maybe a griddling project that we might like to do together. So stay tuned for more information on griddling, especially as it relates to food storage and emergency preparedness. So thanks for being with us on this video, and we will see you very soon for more videos related to self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness. See you soon.